Hello, friends and family, and welcome to the global pandemic causing crippling anxiety meditation hour that only lasts 10 minutes. The weather right now is a bit stormy, and we've been losing power repeatedly. So if that happens during the course of this video, I'm just going to carry on. <laughs> I apologize about that. Uh, as usual, this is not meditation instruction. I am not a meditation teacher. This is just a discussion. Um, today's topic is in part procrastination. My mom sent me an article recently uh, from CBC News where they were interviewing um, a researcher. Um, his topic of research is specifically procrastination and within the interview it came up that uh, he as sort of a side note he addressed the topic of uh, meditation and mindfulness practices um, visibly under fMRI scans uh, reducing the size of the amygdala, which is known to be at least in part responsible for acts um, such as procrastination, I mean, amongst other things. And uh, to, to some extent, the, the article uh, uh, which accompanied the interview sort of uh, dismisses mindfulness and meditation as being a difficult route to avoiding procrastination or to correcting procrastination. And I feel like this is actually the, uh, the deeper end of a previous topic, which is uh, washing the dishes. That uh, as we were discussing before, it takes very little time with meditation. And by little time, I mean 10 minutes a day, twice a day. Uh, so 20 minutes a day for, let's say, a month or two months before a person will start noticing concrete differences to this effect, um, such that we close the laptop and we stop watching YouTube and we go wash the dishes, which is a minor task, but still one that we can procrastinate on. And the idea that meditation needs to reach these great heights of actually modifying the physical um, observable reality of our brain, externally observable reality of our brain, before we will see the consequences is, um, it's a bit of an extreme position to take. And it's, it's easier to be empirical about your own experience. You don't necessarily need a, a specific marker which says, oh, your amygdala has has shrunken <laughs> by a certain percentage and therefore you will be this much more effective in life or this much less a procrastinator. Um, and early on I was discussing often um, the idea of comparing meditation to exercise and I, I think that people tend to approach meditation with a healthy skepticism, and that's good, but that that skepticism can really lean very heavily on scientific research. And in general, um, it's safe to say the, the strongest researchers in the field will admit that scientific research on meditation um, is terrible at best. Um, uh, the uh, the best um, the best research I've seen I have the book up there but um, is from a book uh, entitled Altered Traits 
And the researchers um, who have come up with this book have done a meta-analysis of most of the research available globally on meditation and uh, have examined over 8,000 studies and found um, fewer than 100 really met their um, standards for uh, scientific rigor. Um, and there are a lot of difficulties, uh, some inherent and some simply due to lack of understanding with respect to researching meditation. But the, the idea that observe, externally observable realities are all we can go by for informing our decisions regarding whether we meditate or we don't meditate um, is a little bit harsh. So we don't exercise in that way. We don't say, oh, okay, show me thousands of Olympic grade athletes proving that running is a good idea, that riding a bicycle is a good idea, that going for a swim is a good idea before I'll do any of those activities. You know empirically and uh, partly from the bias of having phys ed class <laughs> our entire youth, um, but more so as an adult. We really, we really notice this as an adult. As a kid, you're healthy pretty much no matter what. Um, but as an adult, you start to notice your body failing. You start to notice your joints hurting, your muscles aching, headaches happening, and exercise is um, is a small remedy for all of those things, which can be observed empirically. So if in my mid-20s or my mid-30s, my exercise routine, if I have one at all, dies off, and I pick it up later, it becomes very clear from this comparison that the time I wasn't exercising to the time that I began exercising um, shows wildly different consequences, even if there are a lot of other variables in play. And the same is true for meditation. I mean, it, um, it is the case that no one would tell you 10 minutes of exercise a day or 10 minutes twice a day of exercise is going to make remarkable differences for you. You have to invest some amount of time. Um, and, and as it is with meditation, you need to invest a certain amount of time, but you can explore and find this empirical evidence for yourself in just 10 by 10 minutes a day um, with a simple breath awareness on upon meditation as an exercise. Um, and this, this pursuit of um, the elimination of what we consider negative qualities or negative behaviors, such as procrastination, um, can be a, a yardstick that we use for this empirical measurement. So we can say, oh, okay, let me examine what my life was like before I began meditating and see if there are any effects of the meditation itself. We shouldn't necessarily approach uh, meditation with the idea that we're going to solve any of these problems. That's not really what meditation is for, but um, it can be an interesting instrument for our own exploration when it comes to trying different meditation techniques and trying meditation out for ourselves to see if it's a worthwhile activity. With that in mind, uh, before the power goes out again, we can meditate for 10 minutes together. I have a 10 minute timer here. If you want to pause the video, you can and get your own timer. In particular, uh, SN Gwenka's 10 minute guided um, Anapan meditation is helpful. Um, there's no harm in using a guided meditation, particularly one like that, which has a lot of um, silent periods within it so that you're not constantly augmented by an 
external aid. Uh, my 10 minute timer is ready and I will start it now.
that's our timer and that's all the time we have for today I hope everyone is staying safe and speaking to their family and taking care of themselves one way or the other. Uh, we will see you um, back here tomorrow. <laughs> Good night, everybody. Bye.